Liz Truss is in, Rishi Sunak has gone, and we have a new Prime Minister. So in this short video, I want to share with you how you are going to be impacted by all of this, and as a property investor, whether you're starting or scaling, what you can actually do. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Cameron Devady. I'm the founder of Premier Property and investor developer over the last 30 years. And of course, it's all about navigating through situations like we have right now. So I've got five key points I want to share with you. The first one I want to share with you is all about inflation. Now, of course, we're already aware inflation is increasing. Bank of England base rate is increasing. Bank of England, when it comes to the inflation, is saying that it is 10.1% right now. And you and I both know that it's nowhere near 10.1%, it's much higher. You've only got to look at your utility bills, you've only got to fill up your petrol, you've only got to buy some building material if you're already investing in property, you know what I mean. Now, that is all happening right now. So inflation, my view, is well into the 18 to 20% already and it's going to continue to increase. Shocking times. It's shocking times and it's scary space out there. However, at the same time, as a property investor, you can actually make it work. It really is about half glass full or half glass empty. Let's discuss the half glass full. So what's actually happening with inflation? Well, actually inflation as a property investor is helping you. So let's say you are borrowing £100,000. Your 100K that you're borrowing to buy income producing assets, that 100K, inflation is actually eroding. It's actually getting less. The more the inflation is, the less this money is actually worth. But remember, if you're borrowing it as a loan, well then of course, that's actually in your benefit, isn't it, when you think about it. And the rent rolls in. So you've got a property, the rent comes in. So something like this, where you're borrowing 100,000 pounds, you put a little bit of a deposit in. You know, you've got anywhere between 750 pounds to 1,000 pounds that's coming into you every single month. And that's not it. Another benefit. Another benefit is, remember, that inflation means that your services and products, anything you buy, starts to increase because you need more money because the money is worth less. Hopefully you're following me here. So when you think about this, well actually inflation, what does that mean? Well your asset, your asset itself, the property that you're actually buying, the house that you're buying with all of this, what is happening to that? Well actually the value of that property is actually going up when it comes to the numbers. So your £150,000 property turns into £165,000, £180,000, £200,000 and as inflation increases, the value of your property just in cause of, because of inflation, in line with inflation, also starts to increase and like what I've just already shared with you, at the same time your loan is reducing. So you've got a double whammy if you like, twice a benefit happening for you. Now having said that, a little bit unfortunate for the people that are not investing in property because they're going to have a very hard time. It's going to be hard for all of us, but we really got to work solutions that can actually work for you as we move forward into 2022 and 2023. We've got to make sure that we have our own financial economy and we take responsibility for our own pensions and the money that we need. Number two, interest rates. What is it going to happen with interest rates? Well, here's my view on this. Think about interest rates. So. The same example, you're borrowing £100,000. The £100,000 you're borrowing right now, you're borrowing it around the 3 to 4% mark. That's where we are right now at Premier Property. And now, no financial advice. Remember, I'm a property investor developer. This is what we do day in, day out. That's what I'm sharing with you here. So what happens? Well, let's say you're borrowing £100,000 at 3%. You will find that your interest-only mortgage is around the £250 mark. That's where you're going to be. Now, as interest rates increase, and we're already seeing that happening very rapidly, aren't we? Six consecutive interest rates already risen, and by the time you're watching this video, we're probably on to the seventh one as well. Quite shocking out there. So, as interest rates increase and they rise, my view is they're going to be going to 6% to 8% for sure. That's where we're going, that's my view. Well, when you think about this, if your monthly payment is £250 per month at 3%, and you have that same monthly payment of £250 at 6%, what that means is instead of borrowing £100,000, you only have half of the purchasing power for that money that you borrowed. You might want to watch this video again, and if you're not part of our community yet, then feel free to subscribe, and of course there's that bell icon, and when you click that, you get the latest videos that I'm doing 
on a regular basis every single week. So feel free to join us. Now, coming back to this, what that means is that that £250 means that you can only borrow or buy £50,000. The borrowing is £50,000 here. So you can notice that your asset prices that you're buying are, it's half the price, isn't it? So what does that mean? Your purchasing power has dropped by 50%. So right now, interest rates are low. Interest rates increase. Your purchasing power right now means that really anything that you buy, even at market value, is 50% discounted. Now, if you're enjoying all of this, feel free to listen back to this channel and feel free to subscribe to our channel as well. There should be some lovely little diagrams going on and pictures going on right now. You know, just click the bell icon and I'll send you the latest video that we do. I'm doing lots of videos, various different types, on-site videos, informative videos. This, of course, is a breaking news video that we're doing right now. Now that we discussed inflation, now that we discussed about interest rates, it brings me to my third point, which is a sentence that you're hearing constantly in the media. We're all hearing it, right? The cost of living crisis. Now, the truth is, of course, that's going to hurt a lot of people. And Liz Truss, what she's bringing into her policies is uh, some, potentially some help with freezing of ut utility prices. Um, as that plays out, let's see what happens. I will continue to do these videos and I'll share with you more on what actually happens. But when she's actually saying that, the cost of living is still going to be increasing, right? So it's going to be difficult for people that are not investing in property. It's going to be hard out there. It's about creating your own financial economy and using property as a vehicle and getting started in this or thinking about your next level and scaling up in property. Property, great vehicle, of course. Now, how can that apply to you? How can you actually make cost of living work for you as a property investor? Well, it brings me to my fourth point which is making sure that you have the cash flow that is required. Cash flow, you've heard, cash flow is king, right? And it so much is. When it comes to property investing, if you are buying and you're renting properties, well, that rental is crucial, isn't it? And you've got to maintain the rental. So how can you do this as uh, Liz Trust is bringing all these policies, inflation is increasing, interest rates going up, what can you do? The one of the things we're putting in place is making sure that your cash flow is safe. So the, your rental comes in. So what can you do? So first of all, we're looking at the ratio of, of the tenants of their earnings versus what the rentals actually are and making sure that you're selective in making sure that you're providing a good home for someone where they can actually be paying for that rental for that home. So vetting your tenants becomes absolutely paramount. That's the part of that. The second part of that I want to share with you is that you can actually build in insurance policies exactly like we're doing at Premier where those insurance policies ensure that if the tenants get into a, a tricky situation, if they are in a situation where they lose a job or their the, the income isn't enough, well then you can help them with payment plans and you don't have to evict them as the last resort. The insurance policies that you can build in will really help them to help with these payment plans. And you don't have to do that. That will be the insurance policy who will bring in a mediator to mediate that process and that, those, that money still comes in, the payments still come in, so your rental still comes in. And as a last resort, if you had to evict the tenant, then they will also help with that policy and your rental will typically be, get paid for the next six months. So something that you can start thinking about. Uh, just go online, there's so many different uh, companies that are doing this right now and you can actually assess this. Aviva is one of them, by the way. Now that we discussed inflation, we discussed interest rates, we discussed the cost of living crisis and what you can do to overcome it and things that you can be putting into place as property investors, I want to share with you the fifth and final point. And this is all about how you can actually reduce your costs and fix your costs. So my final point I want to share with you, how can you reduce your costs? Well, one thing is when you're doing your refurbishments, then it's all about value engineering. What that means is you find ways and methods that where the cost of materials is going up, you mitigate that by actually reducing how you do the refurbishment. So many different ways. One of the ways, for example, I share with you right now, a top tip, kitchens. So many people have quick kitchens with lots of 300 mil units and 500 mil units. So what we do is when um, we're doing refurbishments, we will maximize on the 1,000 mil units because what you'll find is a 1,000 mil unit is typically one third of the price 
of any 300 or 500 unit that uh, looks lovely, the 1000 mil units look lovely as well, but it will reduce your kitchen price. Very simple, yet very effective. And there's so many of these li nice little hacks that you can use to reduce and value engineer your cost down of your refurb. Also be thinking about your interest rates. So of course I can't give you financial advice, I can only share with you what we're doing day in day out. So what we're doing is we're fixing rates as fast as we possibly can. So we're buying and we're adding value and we're releasing that seed capital and we're fixing it. I'm personally loving five year fixes. With five year fixes what I'm finding is yes you pay a little bit more interest but what you're actually paying for is an insurance policy, a hedge for the next five years where you know what your fixed cost is going to be. So not only have you value engineered your refurb down, you have secondly fixed costs knowing what your fixed costs are going to be, you know what your rentals are that are coming in and when you do this correctly and you work the numbers out right from the beginning, what you've got is a margin that you have now secured and it's a margin that is constant and consistent which gives you peace of mind. Hope I'm making sense for you. I hope you enjoy these videos. We've shared five points there for you. My name's Cam Devady, helping you to take your property investing to the next level. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,